Hello and welcome to Capacity Messaging and SMS World. Thank you very much for joining uh, this latest uh, keynote presentation entitled um, What's... Hello and welcome to Capacity Messaging and SMS World. Thank you for joining this latest presentation entitled Keynote Presentation, Securing the Mobile Channel with Identity APIs sponsored by Vodafone Business. I'm David the Senior Product Developer at Capacity Media and Content Manager for this year's event. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to say a big thank you to session sponsor Vodafone Business. Please drop by their virtual stand to say hello to them. The virtual platform is available uh, and open for formal and informal networking, giving you the opportunity to contact attendees, sponsors and exhibitors as you schedule your meetings for the 8th to the 10th of June, where you'll be able to take advantage of all of our networking features, including video group chats, interacting with virtual booths, and one-to-one -one meetings. In alignment with networking opportunities, with a range of thought leadership content in areas such as ATP SMS monetization, the state of play in RCS, CPAS, messaging in the post-pandemic era, and omni-channel messaging, and more. Check out our full program in the agenda tab where you'll be able to see our full agenda from the 8th to the 10th of June, as well as our pre-event coverage from last week. If you have any questions from the, about this year's event, please reach out to one capacity media team. Here is the speaker for this presentation session. And with that, I'll hand you over to Fraser King. Fraser, all yours. Thanks, David. Um, so yeah, good afternoon, everybody. So for the next uh, 15 minutes, um, I'm going to share with you some of the work we're doing here at Vodafone uh, Carrier Services to use uh, network data um, to help our customers to uh, secure the mobile channel. Um, so let me talk to you about the, um, you know, the business problem. So when, when we sit down with, with senior executives in the fraud and security space, and we ask them about what are the challenges uh, that they are facing, but they all tell us the same thing. Uh, you know, how do I protect my business from the guy on the left, the cyber criminal, without turning all my customers into the guy on the right, the frustrated customer. Um, you know, the guy on the left has been having uh, probably the best year of his life, right? The, the pandemic has been extremely good uh, if you're a cyber criminal. Um, UK finance estimates that uh, roughly 1.6 billion pounds uh, was stolen during 2020, and sort of a 20 to 30 percent uplift on the year before. Um, that's about three and a half thousand pounds of every minute of every day. And as organizations um, battle to make life hard for the cyber criminal, they risk turning all their customers into this um, frustrated, angry customer by introducing barriers and, and friction. Let, let me give you an example of, of what I'm talking about. Now, I want to show you a, a journey that we're all familiar with. This is, and I'm not picking on Coinbase, the experience here is consistent, doesn't matter if you're installing a, a mobile banking app or even um, you know, wanting to pay your gas bill. Um, but effectively, what's happening here is uh, this is an example where someone has downloaded an application uh, and they're reinstalling an application on the device. Um, the application will typically ask them for a username and a password. Um, and it's in this day and age, it's, it is quite strange that we still use username and password because no one trusts username and password as a form of, of security. Uh, you know, over 70% of customers uh, use five passwords across every device. So knowledge-based authentication, username to passwords is the most easy um, uh, authentication mechanism to be, to be uh, compromised. So although it's used, uh, it's not trusted. So what companies like Coinbase and others do, um, they'll use a second factor authentication, which is a one-time password. And you know, this audience will be you know, aware uh, more so than most um, of, the, of the power of a one-time password. So one-time password is by far the world's most successful uh, second factor of authentication. Um, it's used around the world. Um, it is, you know, I think about a third of, of all revenue uh, from, from SMS actually comes from, from one-time password. Um, but it does have a number of known uh, security challenges that are, that are well publicized. And there's a panel later today where they talk about some of the controls they're putting in place. But again, because service providers don't trust one-time password absolutely, in this case, they're actually introducing a third uh, step in the process as well. In this case, they're actually sending a dynamic link via email. So the customer now has to go into their email, click on the link, um, and then that gives them access. So three factors of authentication. Um, you would probably say if you were looking to design the greatest customer experience, this certainly would not be it. Um, but it's this trade-off, right, between trying to create um, the, 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 the right level of security without making life too hard. Really, where, where we are focusing our thinking is how do we get to a point where we can add more seamless authentication 
How do we enable customers to um, register for new services, to reinstall applications, to log in without having to go through many, many, many steps without compromising um, the level of security? Now, we um, in Vodafone, as I mentioned, we're opening up access to our data via APIs. Now, why is mobile operator data a really interesting source um, of identity information? Well, you know, mobile networks produce vast amounts of dynamic data and customers have always got their mobile phone with them. So that phone, that authenticator, if you like, is always in their pocket. It's always producing information about them. Um, you know, we are a regulated industry. So the majority of our customers, when they connect to our service, they have to prove uh, who they are. So they have to provide, um, you know, an identity document, the credit check, and we provide a whole range of uh, processes. Um, security and DNA is very much in the in the um, in, in, in the sort of DNA, if you like, of mobile operators. And then as well, you know, it's first party. So when a mobile operator starts opening up access to data, when a mobile operator starts verifying. Uh, you know, people are who they say they are, that data is coming from that mobile operator's customers. So it is in our, um, our best interests of our business and our customers to make sure that we are doing that uh, in the right way. We're meeting all of the uh, correct data processing agreements uh, and, you know, we've got the right auditability and consent in place where required. Um, so this is our um, identity hub. So for the past few years, Vodafone and the other mobile operators around the world We've been exploring how we take the inherent authentication capabilities of a mobile network and we extend that out to enterprise customers via APIs. The hub is very much our um, manifestation of, of that strategy. Uh, it's a common platform that sits across the, the Vodafone group. Um, it's aligned to uh, Mobile Connect standards, OpenID Connect, uh, OAuth, and it's part of a cross mobile industry initiative to open up common products and services, common APIs. Uh, across the um, across the mobile industry. Um, it delivers a comprehensive portfolio of APIs. You can see them listed. Uh, we then kind of bundle those APIs into services and those services then uh, address different um, use case or kind of user challenges um, inside of the, uh, the, the, the market. Um, and we really focus around kind of three areas, authentication of the user, uh, providing data about the, the trust uh, in the actual mobile number, and then also about the identity of, of that user. But ultimately it's a way of connecting uh, our markets and the data in our markets on the left with the industries um, on the right, right? Common support, common terms and conditions, common standards across the Vodafone group. Um, we've launched this platform in four of our markets, UK, Germany, Spain, and Greece. Uh, we'll be enabling these services across multiple markets uh, as we go through this year. So let me give you a, a, an example uh, of how this service is used um, in anger. And, you know, coming back to that um, use case that we're all very familiar with, which is um, users uh, requesting a one-time password. Um, now we don't disclose the customers that use these services, um, but what I will show you is you'll see a number of brands now uh, across the world who are starting to use the mobile number as part of the mobile identity. So when you set up an account with most e-commerce merchants today, they will actually ask you a mobile number. The reason they do that is because the mobile number is actually the most personal uh, form of security there is. Yes, they'll send you one-time passwords, but once they know your mobile number, they will also do checks uh, of this nature to assure you are who you say you are, that number's not been compromised. It's a very, very good way of creating a high level of trust uh, in that mobile user's uh, identity. So in this example here, uh, a user is um, either trying to log into their service via a different platform, or maybe they've bought a new phone and they're reinstalling uh, you know, the application. Um, before the service provider sends the one-time password over um, SMS, um, they're doing a check with the identity hub of when is the last date and time of a SIM swap of that device, and when is the last uh, date uh, that the number was actually recycled. Now the SIM swap date is used to protect against um, account takeover or unauthorized um, SIM swap. Uh, recycle is used um, to ensure that the same user that registered or logged into your service the very last time you saw them actually is that same person. So this is really about continuity uh, of, of, of user. So the service provider sends the mobile number and the SIM swap check and the recycle check uh, to the Vodafone Identity Hub. Uh, if it's a Vodafone UK customer, we reach into the Vodafone UK data store. If it's Spain, Germany, uh, Greece, we'll reach into the corresponding data store. And then what we return to that um, service provider is we return the last known uh, date timestamp of the SIM swap and the last known recycled date. The service provider will typically feed that into some sort of a, a decision engine or a risk engine. And really what they will be looking for is the, um, the duration since the last uh, SIM swap or the duration since the last um, mobile number recycle. Uh, you know, if you are a bank and it's a high risk transaction, you might set that threshold at, you know, greater than seven days or 14 days or even 30 days. Uh, if it's a lower uh, risk, a lower threshold, then you might set that at a lower level. But this ultimately gives the, the service provider the 
uh, ability to, to associate a level of risk that that may or may not be the same uh, user. Um, recycling is used, obviously, if the user is not logged in for a you know, number of months or a number of years, um, what you know is it's the same user it was six months or a year ago, right? That number is not being recycled, issued to a new user uh, who is either, you know, trying to impersonate the genuine user uh, or potentially uh, that number has been allocated to a new user who is legitimately trying to re-register for your service. So this is about giving um, the service provider a level of control uh, in the continuity of, of that user and that, that service. Um, as long as the um, thresholds are met, then that, you, that service provider will release that um, one-time password. Um, you know, based on standards, uh, you know, complies with all data privacy regulation, um, it's actually not personal data. Um, and also from a PSD2 perspective, um, PSD2 has made it pretty clear uh, that you shouldn't be sending one-time passwords to users unless you have conducted some form of additional check to ensure that that user is still under the control of the same SIM card or the same number. So we see these very much as creating uh, a PSD2 compliance solution, uh, you know, for anyone sending a one-time password. So what does that um, look like in reality? Well, this is just giving you a bit of a walkthrough of, of when you start joining some of these services together. So this is the user experience, because what I just showed you, all of this happens in the background. The user doesn't see any of those communication between the service provider and the mobile operator to confirm that kind of continuity. What, what does the customer see? Well, what I'm showing you here is actually a um, going back to that first use case where someone is re-registering an app for the first time. But this is actually using two of our APIs. It's using our SIM swap API to make sure the user is still under control of that number and that SIM. And it's also using a, an, an API we call a number verify, which effectively issues a token uh, to that mobile app. That mobile app can then uh, join back to the mobile uh, number. So let, let, let's walk through what's, um, what's happening here. So the first thing you'll notice, this is a, a Vodafone customer downloading the Vodafone app, using it for the first time. What, what you'll notice is they download the app they never enter a username or a password because they don't need to enter a username or a password because we're effectively um, enriching that session with a token from our mobile network that's joined back to that um, uh, mobile number. The user is able to authenticate. I mean, this is, this is zero friction for the user. The user is also not actually seeing this code. So the user can't be uh, socially engineered into reading that code out. If there's malware on the device and that malware is trying to kind of pick up uh, that code, that code is no use. That code can only be exchanged between the service provider and the application vendor. So really what you're starting to see now is you're seeing a seamless authentication journey, right? We're removing friction from the user experience without compromising uh, the level of security that's being offered um, to the consumer and to the uh, service provider. Now, um, this service itself, uh, we on Vodafone actually launched a service across 11 of our markets. You can see the 11 markets on the right-hand side. Uh, over 104 million mobile users are now accessible uh, to this service. And probably the, the easiest way of uh, thinking about it, if you're a service provider, this is taking what an authenticator does, but it's effectively building that authenticator into a network layer, which you then build into your application, right? So completely seamless, zero friction to the end user, um, but creating a much, much higher level of security than sending, um, you know, uh, one-time passwords and, and kind of other codes uh, kind of out in the open. Um, so a little bit of a feel for, for kind of how we're doing it. And that really um, ultimately brings um, me to the um, end of this presentation. Um, we have a, uh, as, as David mentioned, you know, Vodafone has a, um, a booth at the event. Uh, you can also, um, you know, check out our website. You can search the Vodafone Identity Hub. Um, but if you're interested in some of the topics that we've talked about today, um, we'd very much welcome the opportunity to, um, to hear from you and to speak to you more about these services. Thank you. Um, cheers. Um, thank you ever so much, uh, Fraser, uh, for that um, really insightful um, presentation there on the identity APIs and uh, your company's uh, strategy uh, within that sphere. Um, so um, I just want to say thanks uh, to session sponsor Vodafone Business for this year's event. Um, please do find time to engage with them. The next session is our keynote panel at 2 p.m. BST entitled What's Next for Enterprise Messaging as we look to enter a post-pandemic world. All of our sessions will be made available on demand on SwapCard for up to 30 days after the conclusion of this year's event, so you won't miss a second from this year's program. Um, thank you very much for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Goodbye for now.